Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Warning, this video will contain spoilers for the animated series Aeon Flux. This video may contain images of nudity and or BDSM. Viewing beyond this point is done at your own risk. I take no responsibility for your decision. Thank you and please have a nice day. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will be discussing Eon Flux, not the poorly conceived and poorly executed 2005 movie, but the series that started in 1991 and lasted through 1995 on MTV. Um, it was the pr product in brainchild of Peter Chung, a born in 1961 in Seoul, South Korea. His family immigrated to the States and 1979 he graduated from college um, as an animator. Um, he worked on Fire and Ice with Ralph Batchy. Um, he was an animator for Batchy. And he also worked on the show Rugrats. Yeah. Um, he also did a, a whole bunch of other things. Um, the Great White Thing. Um, and just... He also did a commercial for the Super Bowl. Let me see what year it was. Check my um, notes here. Uh, Diet Pepsi. It was an Eon Flux style commercial um, with Cindy Crawford and Malcolm McDowell um, that worked. Uh, yeah, Peter Chung has an impressive resume. Very good writer. Um, and he came up with Ian Flux at a time when the Generation X kids of the late 60s and early 70s were coming into adulthood. 19, like I said, 1991. We were coming into adulthood. We had grown up on Frank Miller comics, Frank Miller's Daredevil, Frank Miller's The du Batman The Dark Knight Returns. We grew up on Alan Moore's The Watchmen, V for Vendetta. Um, and stuff like that. We had this need, this psychological this this being part of our DNA this particular subset of Gen X we wanted more and sh things though as good as and I enjoyed Rugrats um, as shows like Rugrats and stuff were but they were still limited they were limited by corporate sponsorship advertisement TV, commercial TV, limited what could be done. Even when you get into the uh, Batman animated series, as good as it was, it was still limited by the fact that it was primetime commercial TV um, and had to follow fairly strict um guidelines as far as story content what could be told 
Chung was approached by MTV. They were formulating what they called what eventually became Liquid TV, which is they kind of looked into the future and understood that with the advent of at this time, I mean, we're talking 1991, early 90s, of TV exploding, going from three basic cable channels to more. You had your you had your pay channels, your HBO, your Showtime, your Cinemax, your then you had your Nickelodeon, you had your um, MTV, you had your VH1, then you had your other networks, your Fox networks coming on your MS, uh, your other, I almost said MSNBC, but that's a news channel. Um, you had all of this taking off and they realized, they saw that with the huge availability of entertainment choices that attention span would decrease and the, the theory behind liquid TV was to give to have a 15 20 minute show that in which you got eight or ten two three four minute segments just boom 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 hitting that that quick fast um, short attention span necessity and that is where Eon Flux was born. Um, Peter Chung, the first episode is 12 minutes long, broken up into six two-minute episodes over the first season of Liquid TV. And with Eon Flux catching the, 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 this this budding um, late 60s, like I said earlier, late 60s, early 70s, Gen X kids becoming adults. These kids, the subset of kids that grew up, like I said, on Alan Moore, um, Frank Miller, and all these other great dark cartoonists, you know, comic book. And with Chung having worked with Frazetta and Frazetta's mantra of, of cartoons being for adults, he came up with Eon Flux. Um, Eon Flux, or Aeon Flux. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I consider both pronunciations proper. I consider both pronunciations right. Um, Eon Flux is a dystopian fiction. It is also falls under the um, moniker of biopunk, uh, spy fiction, psychological drama. You name it and goes on. Um, probably some cyberpunk elements in there if you think about it. But the whole thing is, is originally in the original first two seasons um, that were done, um, Ian Flux was the name of the show. The fan base is what gave her the name. They they imposed the name Eon Flux on her. The, this main assassin. This assassin that we don't know very much about other than she is going out of her way and assigned to kill the um antagonist, well not really the antagonist, her, her nemesis, Rothschild, 
Um, his name is his first name is escaping me right offhand. Uh, Trevor uh, Goodchild um, just came across it in my notes. Um, and the first season, first two seasons, when it was broken up on uh, Liquid Television, there's one maybe two words of dialogue in the entire you know first two seasons um it was it relied heavily on viewer paying attention to viewer taking in what they were watching um chung gave his audience the credit of being intelligent enough to absorb what was what they were looking at without a bunch of extraneous dialogue, a lot of without the extraneous um, exposition, um, we get this unknown female assassin who later became Ian Flux because of the fan base that she took on that name, going after. Trevor Goodchild, who is the tyrannical authoritarian dictator of the of the country that opposes hers. And, it, and, it, and they delve into questions of sexuality, um, sex, um, what is you know what is acceptable sexual habits, BDSM, um and because it's on MTV and it's late night liquid TV originally was late night MTV they didn't have the the restraint they didn't have the the censorship that conventional TV that say NBC or ABC or CBS would have they have a lot more latitude. They can tell deeper stories. And the animation, you can see in the animation Batchy's impact on Chung, or Batchy's influences. Coming into the third, final season, MTV wanted a show that centered around Ian Flux and not part of Liquid Television. Which meant you had to have dialogue. You had to have exposition because you're going to these longer episodes and you had you had to you had to engage the longer the episode, the more you had to engage. You had to keep the audience interested for longer than two or three minutes. Um, we had they had established Chung had established the trope of Eon dying at the end of each episode because it was his goal. The like I said, the first twelve, the first episode was twelve minutes broken into six two-minute episodes. Eon f dies at the end of that episode, and she dies at the end of every episode, and. The trope, part of the trope was he never explained how she came back. Were they clones? Was it some kind of regenerative psych, you know, science? Were, was she able to defeat death somehow biologically? We don't know. These are all questions that they intentionally didn't answer. They left it to the viewer. They left it to the audience to interpret. Um... And Chung, in his wisdom and in his intelligence, gave his viewing audience, knowing where his viewing audience was coming from. It's the MTV generation. It's the, the dark, morose comic book kids. It's these, these people who are only functioning in society because... They're, they're becoming adults. They have to function in society. They're not part of the society. They're, 
I mean, to a certain degree, I exist in the society that's around me just because of the very nature of my independence, my, my individuality. Um, and that's, and I would say kids born, there's a lot, there's a subset of Generation X born between about 1967 and about 1973. And in that subset, you have the, the kids that are just fiercely individualistic, fiercely going to buck whatever they perceive to be societal norms. Um, and that's what they do. They, they, and this is what Eon Flux caters to. Um, I honestly think what killed any kind of chances of having a midnight movie, um, a cult following type thing was the, the, the 2005 movie. The 2005 movie sucked. And that's putting it mildly. Um, I have a copy of it for nostalgia reasons. I watch it occasionally. But the animated is by far the far superior storytelling. Um, that movie, from what I, my opinion, this is my opinion of, is that the studio wanted to try to reach outside of this niche fandom. Um, wanted this broader audience. And in doing so, killed the movie. Um, Peter Chung was not even, from what I've read, he wasn't even asked to help with the movie. He was just kind of made outside of his purview. Um... Shalice Theron, who played Eon Flex in the movie, who would be later on become Furiosa. Um, she even un understood that this movie sucked. Um, Chung said it sucked. And I think that movie's what killed any possible growing of this niche fandom. Um, and it's a travesty. Um, as of rec this recording, um, there, 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 there have been whispers in the wind about them trying to get with Chung and actually make an appropriate, either animated or live action full length movie. Um, which I think would be great. The only problem is, is because of the 2005 movie screwing things up so badly. It's going to be hard to do a Eon Flux movie that makes the accountants happy, makes the executives happy, and makes the, fan, the niche fan base happy. But those are just my thoughts on Eon Flux. Um, if you have any thoughts, opinions, ideas on Eon, put them, feel free to put them down in the, in the, in the, the comments below. Um, I feel this is an appropriate backdrop for Eon Flux just because of the, the, the death and reincarnation and death of the character over and over and over again. Um, the sexual tension the fact that, and I believe it's, it's either, I think it's the Greek culture, the ancient Greek culture that, that, that the, the word, where the word orgasm derives from actually means little death. Um, the, and this, and this, um, this show, or this, series the cartoon series the animated series is highly highly sexually charged so um like i said it deals with sexual orientation sexual choices um what is considered proper what is considered improper 
um, fetishes, BDSM, all of that is in this. And it's played out, like I said, the first two seasons are probably the best. If the first season, the one episode, is is probably the hallmark, probably the, the magnum opus for Yon Flux. Because it, it goes through everything. Um, it makes you question the world around you. And there's no dialogue in the way. There's no dialogue guiding you to th your thought process. It's all and how you interpret what you see. And it's that's just that's just Chung's brilliance in this show. And with all that being said, I need to wrap this up. Um, if you haven't seen uh, Eon Flux or checked it out, um, you can find clips on YouTube. I believe it streams on Paramount. If you have Paramount streaming, um, it is... Just one of those shows that, even if you don't like it, you should at least watch it once to to get a idea of a of a particular subset of teenagers becoming adults in the early nineties. So until next time, be a good human. Be good to other humans. Peace. Hey, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?